Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is The First Word. I am your host, Pastor Rashi Taylor, back once again looking at the last lesson in this here plan as we talk about hope in troublous times only through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Dr. J, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. How about good. yourself? I'm good. Good to have you back with us once again. Dr. Drew, how are you? I'm doing great this morning. How about yourself? Oh, brother, I cannot complain. I appreciate you popping up all the way from Columbus, Ohio. And Dr. McLean, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I am glad to have you. Uh, friends of ours who are joining us online, welcome once again. If you are watching us for the first time, we welcome you. We here practice the SPACE acronym. For those who have been here, it's old hat for you. But if this is your first time with us, as you go through the, the Sabbath school lesson with us, as you're reading these verses and hearing these words and these, these um, questions being answered, see what the Lord is saying to you by saying using S as a sin to confess. So you're making a note of sins that you may need to confess as it relates to the information being shared. P promises you may need to claim in the word of God or through the word of God so that you can make it in these last days. A an attitude to adopt or adjust, something that the Lord is calling you to change in your very own walk and talk with Christ. See, a command that maybe you need to obey, something that is in the word of God that you know you need to do um, and you need want to start obeying it in the here and now. And then last but not least, E, an example to follow. As you read about maybe one of these characters in the word of God, you see their example and maybe that's something that you need to apply to your life so that you are having an organic and genuine worship experience day in and day out. All right. And also, lastly, could you please like, share and subscribe? So share this word with someone yeah. so that you can give what you have been giving. If you apply the space acronym, then you have a living word that you can testify that God has done something with you on this Sabbath morning and you can't wait to give it to someone else. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started and dive into the word of God. Ms. McLean, could you give us a word of prayer? Yes, absolutely. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word. We thank you that you are our only hope. We ask, Lord, that you will anoint the algorithm, that this video will go to whoever needs to hear and see it. And I pray and invite your Holy Spirit to come and give us the spirit of wisdom. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, Jen, I'm gonna need uh, five of those t shirts that says anointed algorithm. I'm gonna need that. I like that. Anoint the algorithm. All right. I All like right. that. Anointed algorithm. Yes, that yeah. is fantastic. So, as we look at the word of God and we we peer into this last lesson, trying to understand and grab a hold of how we can have hope in the time of trouble, what seems bleak and, and scary uh, to some of us, Jen, um, as we read John 1, uh, 1 John. 3, John yeah. 8, and John 14. What is the only sufficient preparation for this coming time of trouble? So this question and these particular verses, um, I don't know if you have. First John 3, 1 through 3. Yes, um, I can pull it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. They remind me of what Jesus, you know, would tell his followers, what he would tell the crowds, um, what mm -hmm. he would teach. And I'm thinking of uh, Matthew 11. You can put up that one, but I'm thinking of Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Are you tired, worn out, mm. burned out on religion? Come to me, get away mm -hmm. with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest, walk with mm. me and work with mm -hmm. me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Come and I'm, I'm, I'm bringing that into the equation because the only sufficient preparation is getting with Jesus, mm. staying with mm -hmm. Jesus. Hoping because mm -hmm. at first I had in my notes hoping in Jesus, but I'm that person who's just like, but what does that mean? Uh huh. And, and yeah. that Matthew 11 said, you know, learn, learn, walk with him and learn what, look at his, look at his example. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Learn mm -hmm. from him. Also, putting our full weight on him. And that this is what mm -hmm. that verse is saying. Um, and allowing the Holy Spirit to just 
work in me, just mm. work in me. Mm -hmm. And it's just hanging out with, hanging out with God. Now mm -hmm. I know that that's not a, it, it's not a, yeah, if you do this, then this is going to happen. You know, I ask, mm -hmm. that's not really what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, it's all, everything is, is all connected to, to the relationship, being in relationship with him. And we were talking uh, in another uh, first word. And I, I remember mentioning that we can't, we can't, we're not in control of anything. We can't do mm -hmm. anything about what's going to happen, what hasn't happened yet, but we can, what we can do is hook into the source mm -hmm. and track mm -hmm. with him and go from there. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And um, first John, Three says in verse two, dear friends, now we are children of God yeah. and what we will be has not yet been made known. But what we know yeah. that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. And you talk about relationships and we talk about that a lot mm -hmm. on here. Um, relationship over religion. Uh, yep. As a, a, a child, I'm sure you've had the, the similar experiences growing up. You may have been at school. You may have been on a school bus. You may have gotten home even before your mother uh, got home. You didn't know what she was going to make for dinner that day unless she told mm -hmm. you to thaw it out, right? Like, <laughs> don't, don't, don't thaw out that chicken or whatever it is unless she told you to thaw it out. But you didn't know yeah. what she was going to make that day. You didn't know how she was going to meet the need, the dinner need for the entire family. But you knew that once she arrived, she was going to prepare whatever she needed to prepare to give you what it is that she intended for you to get. Yeah. And so as, as children, not orphans, not bastards, not just yeah. affiliates, we are children. We have mm -hmm. the blessed assurance that we may not have an, a full understanding of who and what we are to be as God has seen us fully realized, but we know that he will meet that need and we yeah. will have that transformation when he arrives. So we can have the hope that as we look forward to his coming, we look forward to the fulfillment yeah. of our reality. We look to forward to the fulfillment of the promise that he made when he created us in his image of how he always intended for us to be. Like we don't have any foundation for what that really looks like right only right. Adam and Eve nope. know what that's like to live in a world completely yeah. in harmony with God but we can trust and believe that we can look forward to that as he appears just like we can look forward to dinner hitting our plates amen our mothers amen we're right <laughs> <It can't be. laughs> amen amen, amen. amen. <laughs> so there are three verses there Psalms 27 and Psalms 91 and Revelation 3 um, so what are some uh, reassuring promises? Or you may have chosen some that 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 resonate with you, Rochelle. What reassuring promises does God give us for the time of trouble? Well, Psalms is a go-to that talks mm. about the time of trouble. And when mm -hmm. you look at Psalms 27, 5, it says, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Come on. In the mm. secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall yeah. set me upon a rock. And we don't know what the pavilion is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we, we, you know, we, we Psalm 91 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place yes. mm -hmm. of the most high. What where is the secret place? Right. What is that? Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We've never experienced that. Mm. But in the time of trouble, Psalms 91, Psalms 27 will be activated. Yeah. Right. We don't know what it's like to hide under the pinions, the feathers mm. of Michael. Mm. But during this time of trouble, Psalms 91 will be activated. And when God hides you, I'm going to use a double negative, can't no enemy. Come on. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And he will give us all a new heavenly name, yeah. according to Revelations 3, verse 10 to 12. Mm. I love yeah. that. Love it. Yes, Can't yes. no enemy. There you go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you got to get double negative to show the positive. <laughs> Amen. Can, can I? Can I? Um, Please. A yes. verse 
a, another verse that's that's really like universal. I think about mm -hmm. you know what reassuring promises. Because I think from a bird's eye view, like what, mm -hmm. what are those things that God tells us that we can apply to a variety of, you know, life stuff? And that's Romans 8. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Where it talks about uh, 831. What then shall we say to these things? Mm -hmm. If God is for us, who can be against us? And yeah. then it jumps down to... No, in all these things, we are more than, oh, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We mm -hmm. are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Like that's, again, that's that skip to the good part, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that, and then he tells us that nothing can separate us. Come on. You know, it's something, mm -hmm. it's something for someone to be like, oh, you know, you need $10, you need lunch today, I got you. Mm -hmm. But for somebody to be like, mm -hmm. you need lunch, you need a yeah. roof on your head, you need a ride, mm -hmm. you need some clothes. Like someone to give you that comprehensive reassurance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I stick with that person? Because mm -hmm. you got mm -hmm. my entire back. You got my whole back. So I feel like that's one of those verses where he reminds me, I got your back today. I got your back next yeah. month. I got your back yeah. at the end. I had your back at the beginning. You know what I mean? Like it's just right. full circle. Yeah. I got you, right? I, like, I got like, you. Yeah. I got with, you. Yeah. Without yeah. fail, without limits, without hesitation, I yeah. got you. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And there are, there are, are, are going to be these coverings that happen that get us through that time. But eventually the Lord will come and shall come. And, and there's going to be this experience to distinct experiences. Uh, if you read in Revelation, there's an experience of the wicked. If you read in, in Isaiah, there's an experience of the righteous. And, and, and so let's look at those and the two mindsets that happen at the coming of Christ. The first, let's look at Revelation. It says, then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, did what when Jesus came? They hid in caves among the rocks of the mountains. And what did they do? They called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can withstand it? That's what the wicked are crying for. So let's look and see what the, 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 the righteous are saying. It says he will swallow up death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people will take away. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day. Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So as we see this, what are some things that stand out to you guys that are just blatantly different from what the wicked are experiencing on that day and what the, the, the righteous are experiencing on that day and how they verbalize that or how that's verbalized in uh, Revelation in Isaiah? One of the things that sticks out for me is just the list that he gives us you know, kings, generals, presidents, you know, these are all people of power that, you know, we as humans today look forward to for our support, for our help, you know, and, and it also made me think of like these doomsday bunkers, you know, that a lot of those same people are building, you know, when this time of trouble comes, is that them hiding in these bunkers now asking in the fall on us because you can't run from God. There isn't a mountain deep enough. There isn't a, a cave far enough, you know, that, that you yeah. can escape. So the first thing that really stuck out for me was just looking at the people and, and while we normally look at them as having, you know, so many resources or so much power and where it's like they can almost create their own magic. It's like now here they are as God is here, you know, begging for death, you know, rather than than face the wrath, you know, that they merge. And then on the flip side, like I said, looking for the righteous people, you know, you're saying almost the polar opposite of that. Lo, this is our God. You know, we have waited on him, you know, that he may save us. 
Um, so as as they're running from God, we're running to God. It's like we we knew that this was coming. You know, this is something we've prayed about. This is something we waited for. This is something that was promised to us. And yeah. now it's finally here. And the other part, you know, the verse where it says, and the tears are wiped away from our eyes was like, clearly we were crying. So things might've been a little rough, you know, but the, that salvation is finally here, you know, and, and those prayers are finally being answered. So those were some of the contrast that I saw, you know, between the two groups of people. All right, Jen, uh, Rochelle, anything you guys wanna add? Yeah, I immediately thought about um, when I was teaching elementary and I had to be away and I had to get a sub. And so, mm. you know, you leave your sub plan. Y'all know you leave your sub mm -hmm. plans, and yo, those are like the easiest days for the kids because I'm right. not trying right. to work hard. Right, do something real. All they do worksheets and stuff like yeah. that, and just yeah. read a book yeah. and be quiet. Yes. But when I would get back <clears throat> to class, sometimes mm -hmm. I'd already have a report of mm -hmm. behavior. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there would be some kids who were glad. <laughs> And then yeah. the ones who know they were acting a monkey, yeah, they didn't want yeah. to see me. Yeah. Because you yeah. know I was about to be in this stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I thought immediately thought about that. And and the way the wicked, because of their choice, I don't want to, and because they don't have a relationship with mm -hmm. God, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. want any of the, I don't want any parts of this. Like I'm afraid. Um, I don't know, I don't know what to expect. Get me out of here. Whereas mm -hmm. those who have that relationship are just like, yo, finally, mm -hmm. we are so glad to see you. Let's mm -hmm. go. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it reminds me of um when when my daddy would come home. You know, we could hear his blue Datsun from <laughs> way, down, <laughs> way yeah. down the street. And we were excited and happy, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't do our chores, if we ain't take out the chicken to be thawed. That mm -hmm. part. Or if, if mom said, wait till your daddy come home, then mm -hmm. we would run and hide. Well, we wouldn't meet him at the gate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, 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 yeah. Then, but, but when everything is good, it's we good. Be right there opening mm -hmm. the gate. That's good. For him. Yes. Um, and and so that reminds me. Of, but again, it, like everybody said, it goes back to relationship. Why does That's Jesus right. say, "Depart from me, I know you not"? Mm. Because you did not have that day to day. Mm. But it's like being in a long distance relationship. When you finally get to see the person, they're coming in town. You're not running away. You're not unavailable. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you're excited. <laughs> you're jumping in their lap. You. Mm -hmm. You're just ready to see them face to face. Right. And yes. that's who Jesus is coming back for, you know? Mm. I love that. And one I thing like that struck that. me, yeah. that struck me in, in all of that is, huh, is the response from the, the righteous, those who have been saved, yeah. is a response about him and a response about them, but not a response about us selfishness has been separated from us by this point. It says he will swallow up death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people will take away, he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has been spoken. We know that there are tears that, that we will shed mm -hmm. on those days because there are people that we had hoped for, that we had prayed for, that we had expected to make it that won't. And so we will, he will relieve the stress, the strain, the last trace of tribulation for those people who are experiencing that, that, that second coming and asking for the rocks. That's heartbreaking for people who love all, who love God and love people. You don't want this experience to be theirs, right? And then there's this, this, that, that I made it over, right? Mm -hmm. That I don't, I know I don't deserve this. If you check my, my resume, I'm unworthy of this. And all I'm receiving is the reward of his righteousness. Yeah. And it says, it will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. Yeah. This is the Lord. This ain't about me, right? Like even my redemption and my reward is not be about me. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So we talked about this on our last episode, like day to day, we have to get rid of that 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 us over them, that us over him, and truly be yeah. submissive. And you see that 
the relationship with God is so primary that the tears that we shed, are, we will shed tears because we don't have a joy for them being lost. We have an ache for everyone to experience what we mm. have waited for. And so um, the difference between the wicked is that even at the end, the focus is on itself. Let the rocks follow me so I don't have to experience God's righteousness without a filter. Mm. So I don't have to be conscious of my, my lack of accepting the grace that was offered to me. I can truly avoid it by allowing the rocks to crush me. So it's it's the real wow. the, the the distinction is selfishness. Um that kind of stood out to me. I appreciate that. That was that was that was that was good. Um someday soon. Someday soon. Someday soon. So um Dr. Drew as we as we turn to you, why do you think God has allowed sin to go on for so long? And at the same time, we we don't suffer any more than our than our lifetime. So how might this perspective help us deal with the difficult question of evil that is only going to get worse as we go forward? How can God's allowance of this sin um, help us understand and have peace? Well, it's because. God is fair and God is just, you know, in, in when the end times come, you know, when all those books are open, we're able to look at the records of life, you know, of, of how many opportunities we had to live our life for God or for those that chose not to, how many opportunities that they had. Um, it's going to become clear because one of the things I can I think we really get messed up as humans is our perception is not God's perception, <laughs> you know, so often we, we want to try to parallel those things or, or, or break it down to our level. And it just doesn't work, you know, because I was thinking, you know, just kind of in my, my holy imagination. If we only had a portion of our lives, you know, to, to try and give to God, what percentage would that be? Would it be half? Mm. Would it be a quarter? Would it be a third? You know, would it be 100 percent? And, and, and again, just follow me down this rabbit hole a little bit. I was like, what if you only had 1% of your life to make that decision of whether you're going to live your life for God or not? That mm. equates to nine months. Wow. That's a lot of, you know, that, that feels like a lot of time, you know, for us to really make that decision. But when you think about it, it's really not. Like that, that time goes by, you know, in the blink of an eye. I mean, we're already halfway through 2024. You know, so it's it's one of those things where I feel like a lot of times we try to wait God's time with ours and it just doesn't work, you know, because, you know, I know there's a lot of argument about exactly how long the earth has been in existence. But my thought is, I'm like, if you just go with the 6000 year number, what's one percent of that? That's 60 years, you know, so it's like you almost have an entire lifetime would just be 1%, you know, of the time that this has existed. So again, God is so long suffering. He loves us so much that he wants to give us all the opportunities that, that we have available. You know, while our lifespans are on average about 75 years, you know, as we look back on it, you know, when the end time comes, you will see that God will give us time after time, after time, after time, so that when it's all said and done, Everybody will say, God, you were right. You were fair. You were just in giving me an opportunity to serve you. You know, for those that rejected him, for those that accept him, we will see time after time after time where he forgave us, gave us a chance to start anew, you know, and, and resurrender our lives, you know, back to him. I think it's just as humans, a lot of times we can't see the way that things do. So we, we try to change it to fit into that box that's more comfortable for us. And again, God is long suffering because thankfully for him, his time is not our time, you know, yeah. this in, in to God yeah. passing in a blink of an eye. But he is allowing these things to happen for as much time that it is. So we do have all the opportunities to really surrender our lives to him. He got all the time in the world. Mercy. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> And, and the older the out. older we get, yeah, exactly, exactly. You want, you want to play the white game? Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, don't play chicken with the, with right. the guy. You gonna lose? Hey, you gonna lose, brother? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Jen, the there's the the thousand year, also known as the millennium period. Yeah. Uh, how does that 
fit into the plan of salvation. Christ come, um, we are the 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 wicked perish, the righteous are taken, and for a thousand years they live in hell. So how does that fit into the plan of salvation? And what does that say about God's character? Well, I think it's really cool that that God worked in a one thousand year vacation, you know. Ooh, um, yeah. Because the skip to the good part. I mm -hmm. mean, don't get me wrong. Heaven gonna be amazing, but mm -hmm. we not staying there. That's yeah. not our just. That's not our final yeah. destination. It's the yeah. earth made yeah. new. But mm -hmm. he he especially designed. I believe he especially designed that time. Mm -hmm. It's almost like y'all. I've had so many like teacher like analogies today. So mm -hmm. teaching elementary, you you send home folder with graded work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every other week or whatever, you send it home. Why? So the parents mm -hmm. can, you know. So what I'm doing, what's mm -hmm. happening in the classroom, is yeah. open. It's a parents. Yeah. It's right, right. clear, right? So mm -hmm. I'm not over here making up grades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think I don't like your child, so I give them a, a seat? No, we're not doing yeah. any of that, right? Yeah. But sometimes parents don't see that, right? And so at mm -hmm. the nine week, the end of the semester or end of the year, a report card comes out and they're just like, well, I don't understand. You know, what, what happened? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, mom and dad, let's sit down. Mm -hmm. And I can open up my books. Yeah, I can Ooh. open up my grade book and I can detail yeah. Yeah, on this day, cool. on that day, and that's all cool. of that. So God mm. is not like this parents. arbitrary mm -hmm. person, uh, person who's just making decisions in a vacuum and he doesn't mm -hmm. care. You know what mm -hmm. you think? God mm -hmm. is just mm -hmm. like, yo, no, I'm the ultimate open. I'm the ultimate transparent. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you. I, I want you to understand what I went through yeah. in pursuit of y'all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying. I want mm -hmm. you to see my intention because it it was leveled a a uh, it was leveled against me that I was that I was unjust that I was unfair that I make decisions for everybody nobody you know can do what they want to do you mm -hmm. know but I I just want y'all to know I want you to know what I know I want you to know what I know mm -hmm. so, you know and so yeah. we're all on the same page and so there is no question there is no and then he's just like all right now come on we got to go. Yeah. John said, yeah. I saw a new heaven and a new uh -huh. new earth. And he saw the, the new Jerusalem coming down because he's just like, yo, we got to complete this whole picture. Mm -hmm. I don't need anybody as a teacher. I don't need anybody walking away unsure mm -hmm. of why their child has this grade or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, we need to all be on the same page. What I know is what you're going to know. Yeah, I love that. One last parent teacher conference. Yeah. Before. We, <laughs> before. <laughs> Before we call this thing really, yeah. really a wrap. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And that the parents trend. be like, who? <laughs> oh, thank you. So yeah. that's that's what Let they've me been go doing. Talk the to whole my time. kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They be like, I haven't yeah. seen any of those. I haven't I seen just, any of those folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 None of that then we on. have Canvas where you can see lives. Yes, <laughs> in real time. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Come on. Oh, you can all wow. just log in. Just log in. Yeah, log that's in. beautiful. I love that. All right, all right. So as we as we prepare to close, in the end, it's really one of two eternities that await us all. The lost, unfortunately, receive the wages they have earned. Um, why then is our only hope for not getting what we deserve, not getting what we've earned, which is death? Why is that only hope found in trusting Jesus? and his righteousness. Let's start with you, Rochelle, then we'll work our way to Dr. Drew and then Jen. See, we all are born, we come out the womb worthy of the second death. We mm. come out the womb voting for Lucifer. Mm. So, which is, and God recognizes that that's really not fair. So he mm -hmm. came and he died in our place. He died, he took the second death so that we don't have to experience the second death. You know, which mm. is really the good news. That's really the gospel. So mm -hmm. all we have to do is accept his righteousness because all of our righteousness is like filthy pads. Yeah. So yeah. we yeah. accept the righteousness mm. of God mm -hmm. and we can be saved. There's really no one that should be lost. Hell is mm. made for the devil and his Amen. Amen. Dr. Drew? 
No, just to second that, like I said, it's again, we we are covered, you know, in sin from from day one to that final day. But God, knowing that from the very beginning, put a plan in place where all we have to do is make one choice, you know, to accept, Mm -hmm. you know, that his son was sent to die for our sins and we don't have to pay our own penalty. You know, and not only that, we are then returned to him and get to spend eternity with him. Um, And for a lot of people, while that might seem like a very hard choice to make, um, it's a very fair, you know, choice to make. It's, it's, you know, the, as, because otherwise, like I said, we all would be spending our eternity. We all would be getting our due rewards, you know, because we have lived a life full of sin. But ultimately, we just need to make one choice to surrender our lives to God. And, and believe that his son died for our sins and we don't have to pay that bill that will come due one day. Mm. Yep. Mm. We don't have to pay that that bill that will come due. So oh another, another story. <laughs> it was, this, was, this was another developmental reading class, freshman uh, Go ahead. class. <laughs> and I, I, throughout the class, remember the day-to-day, y'all, we talked about the day-to-day, the day-to-day. So, you know, I had to have a come to Jesus meeting with my students because, yo, what are y'all doing? Y'all come to class looking at me. I'm over, I'm up here teaching y'all sitting there looking. Y'all, some, of, some of them didn't even have books. So I had to have a little sit down and say, listen, first of all, don't come back to my class if you don't have a book. Don't come back. Don't come back. Right? All y'all have to do is come to class, listen, do the assignments. You're going to be good. Right? You, tr- you Trust me. I'm your instructor. I got everything you need. If you stick with me, you'll be fine. Some, they came back to class, they had their books and they st- they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. Some did not, ex- they didn't accept. Listen, I'm giving you everything you need to pass this class. They, some of them did not accept it, right? Some of them stopped coming to class or whatever. Um, and at the end of the semester, I'm doing the passes and fails, passes and fails mm. because mm-hmm. I was, I, I warned you, I was with you uh, every every class period. I gave you everything that you needed and guaranteed that you would pass, pretty much. Guaranteed that you would pass. I had one young lady. She was an athlete. She was a student athlete, and she was about to lose her scholarship. She was in danger of losing her scholarship mm-hmm. for a pass or fail course. Mm-hmm. She reached out to me because I was full-time at another college. She reached out to me. She emailed me. She found my email and was just like, what can I do, mm. Dr. Patterson? What mm-hmm. can I do? Mm-hmm. This is my situation. This is what she earned. She got a fail, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But because she woke up and recognized that the only way I can get this pass is I got to get with the professor. <laughs> I got to mm-hmm. get with the teacher mm-hmm. and find it because I got I to gotta get out of here. Like I can't be held back. Only because she asked, I went... And I advocated for her. I got that mm-hmm. that F turned to an I. I mm-hmm. told her everything that she needed to do. She did all of that, turned it in, and was just like, what else mm-hmm. can I do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else? And then I went and had that turn to a, a, a P on her behalf because she asked, because she woke up, because she got it. She got mm-hmm. it. She was just like, yo, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. She's the only one who did. And so it was, it was, I, I held that capacity um Mm -hmm. and she recognized that what she earned she didn't get what she earned but she leaned on what i was able to provide for her so that she could pass um Mm -hmm. we have to lean on what god has done not what i've done Mm -hmm. i gotta track with him and Mm -hmm. and lean on what he's done because he's done the he's done the work he's done the work because i have earned a fail I've earned a fail, yeah. but he's saying, Amen. I got a pass for you. I got a pass. Amen. For you. I, I love that. I love yeah. all of those. Um, and we'll just close with that, that it, 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 it includes us. Yeah. Involves us, but yeah. it's not about us. It's not it's about us. It's already been done. I just uh, took a group of seniors to the Bahamas, the Dominican Republic and Turks and Mercy. Caicos. And the only people who didn't go are those who said no thank you wow the the money had been raised over the course of their high school career so by the time the senior trip came 
The money was already there. All they had to do was accept. So oh, the only people left behind, the only people who didn't go on the boat, the only people on. who, didn't, who didn't experience those days in paradise are those who said, no, thank you. Knew exactly what was being offered, knew exactly where it was going, knew exactly what it included. Mm. But they said, no, thank you. So for yeah. you, the price has already been paid. The, the down payment, the boat, the trip to paradise is already covered. That All person. you have to do is say, yes, I want to be there yes. or no, thank you. Come on. And you, and you get what it is that you've asked for. This yeah. is the first word where we let the Bible be the last word. We thank you for this time. We've enjoyed this lesson with you. Tune mm -hmm. in next week as we start a brand new series. May God bless and keep you. We'll see you next time. Bye.